How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park to Prem. If you didn't see yesterday's video, there were four teams separated by one point at the top of the Premier League with one game left of the year. Uh, yeah, it was a bonkers end to the season. There was also a cup final as well. So if you didn't see that video, go watch it. I appreciate that because people come back for the transfer specials, maybe you didn't see how the season ended. If there's a video to watch, it's very much yesterday's. Anyway, it is only the 25th of May. I want to get some transfer business done early and we are back here to kick things off with a bang. A new season awaits our third in the Premier League. And whilst it'd be natural, I suppose, given the fact that we have just finished second to say the aim for this next year is to win the league, being realistic for a moment, based on our season preview and the ninth place finish, uh, in all honesty, I feel like just getting Champions League football would be enough. A top five finish and I'll be happy this coming season. It's safe to say that we have a good squad, a young squad, a growing squad, but there needs to be room for improvements. And I'm hoping that this year is going to be the first year where we really take a leap forward and can maybe start to attract some elite talent. Our reputation is now up to three and a half stars, continental. Hopefully that will climb a little bit more when we get to the official end of season bit in about a month's time. But yeah, we have money to spend as well. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at this. £120 million transfer budget. They're all thereabouts. Of course, Ospina sold in January. That's some nice money. And as well as reinvesting that money that we have already received in January, we've got some players joining us. Two of these you already know about. Krim Kanate is an experienced striking option for us. The 30-year-old looks very, very good. Excited to have him in the team. He could end up being a regular starter, although given how Sam Fay finished this year... It'd almost feel cruel to drop him, wouldn't it? We also have Conor Gagan joining us from Rangers. This guy just a good free transfer, I think. Uh, a bit of depth out of the centre attack in mid position. And there is one more signing here. A player that I got the ball rolling on rather early. Justin Swainston. This guy is 17 years old. A centre-back playing for Exeter. Capped under 19 level for England. He's played a lot of football in League 2 for the year just gone. We've signed him for £575,000. I feel like that's a bargain. I, I will also say he looks quite old for 17, doesn't he? Anyway, we are just getting started with this transfer window. We need to get some cooking done. I'm going to review the squad right after the intro. Let's run that and get straight into things, shall we? Yes, folks, today is episode number 91 of Park to Prem. Just a little bit of a heads up, I am feeling under the weather. I am just going to record for as long as I can whilst talking. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I kind of feel like crap, but as I mentioned a few episodes ago, I'm away around the Easter period and I'm going on a break, an actual YouTuber break. So as a result of that, we're pre-recording stuff I really could do with not getting ill. So we're going to soldier on and see how we get on. One like on today's video is one prayer. Go, go down below, leave a like. Leave a comment if you're feeling particularly nice. Let's feed this video into the algorithm. Now, one thing to note is if you didn't catch the video that I'm hoping went up last week, I've not actually recorded it at the time I'm sat here, there is a new version of the skin that I use in Football Manager that has been released. It is a very, very good skin. I'm a quite big fan of it and you will notice minor changes over the course of this video new bits showing here there and kind of everywhere there's lots of new features i think we're going to use as well look at this we've got the new analytics so we can really look at players performances comparing them uh, by percentile against their peers uh, of well players in the top 20 leagues around the world and on top of that one feature i'm quite keen to use is the season preview for international competitions yeah we've got a world cup going on this year it's in south korea we have the media dream 11 down here in the bottom right which of course you don't normally get in football manager but on top of that there is this little tab here season preview of course you ordinarily get this for domestic league uh, kind of competitions but the nice thing about this screen is you can actually look through two players from every single nation competing in the uh, competition so we can do some in de detailed scouting i found what i assume is a costa rican player here arias I'll be, I'll be honest, I thought he was going to be better than that. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to be going through this list of players at some point to try and find some players to add to the team. And another new feature of the skin, of course, is the new tactic screen, which looks nice. It might feel a little bit different for you guys, but with this layout with the tactic screen on the other side, we can have it nice and big. My face isn't in the way. I think, well, this is just quite a nice screen to run down the squad and talk about the plan for the year. In terms of the lineup that we have saved in here and the subs, this is actually the team that featured in the Cup final and final game of the season last episode. 
I don't feel like we need to make wholesale changes to the team. There are a few areas of improvement where I think we need to step it up. Now, I think the first of those positions is going to be a defensive midfielder. Akera Fawns, the 24-year-old, is a very good player. I feel like he could be a great depth centre-back. Kind of, you know, you go to third-choice centre-back who can play defensive mid. But in terms of elite-level defensive mids, I hate to say it too loudly... I don't think he's quite that. He's a player who I have no intention of selling, although there is some interest in him, so maybe if the right offer came in, we'd move him on. But at the same time, yeah, defensive midfielder, I think, is my number one priority. And the other position I mentioned last episode I think we need to improve is Riviere, who's the other defensive midfielder. This guy is very well suited to be, of course, a deep-line playmaker. You can see here, looking at his attributes, he ticks a lot of the boxes, but ultimately, I'm just not quite sure he's of that mega elite level. I feel like, again, he could be a very good option to have on the bench. Great defensively, great from a creativity point of view. So if we want to bring in someone who can maybe fulfill those deep line playmaker duties, but is going to be solid at the back, he could be the man to go for. I suppose the question with that position comes, if I am going to replace him, is it worth just promoting Mark Anderson to the team instead of signing someone? Because when you look at Mark Anderson, the 18-year-old, he's ridiculously good, isn't he? I, uh, yeah, he is actually really, really good. I might just play Anderson instead of signing a player. I'm changing my transfer plans even now. I think one aspect of the squad we definitely need to address is just the number of players. There's a few too many players here. There's a few players who were out on loan for the year just gone, such as Matthew Martin, who we actually signed last year. He was back on loan at Hibs. I like this guy as a depth option for us at 19 years old, but with his arrival, maybe we need to move on a centre-back. And elsewhere in the team, there are a couple of players like Rene Hansen here, who I like as players. I don't necessarily love. Rene Hansen, value is very, very high. He's spent the year on loan at Wrexham. And another player who's been out on loan this year in the Championship is Kamara. Both these players are kind of players who, if we weren't already challenging for Champions League spots and were more of a mid to low end Premier League team, I'd be keeping around, I'd be putting in the first team. But given the rate at which our team has accelerated, the fact they've perhaps not kicked on and developed to quite be of that quality, and their valuations... I think we might be looking to sell them this year. If you were wondering, by the way, the first team currently sits at 29 players. So yeah, we need to do a bit of a cleanup, I think. And to be fair, when you look at player valuation sorted by value, and then the number of appearances some of these players have made, I'm looking at the likes of NDA and Mascara. If the right interest and right bid comes in, I might be tempted to sell, especially Mascara. I like Mascara, but he's unhappy at the club at the moment. He wants to leave. We signed him for £2.5 million right now. There's some quite big teams interested in him, which on the one hand, it kind of makes you think, maybe I should keep him around. On the other hand, it makes you think, maybe we should offer him out. And in fact, looking at things here, apparently I've already offered him out recently. I don't remember doing that, but I probably did do that. A little bit of behind the curtain here as to how things work as a YouTuber. Often what happens is I'll play Football Manager one day, get to the point where I need to record, but go in kind of my head, right, I'm recording tomorrow, I can leave the save game. And then what happens is I leave Football Manager open for, you know, the next few hours whilst I'm just sat at my desk playing other games or just doing something else like editing a video. And I sit there tinkering and doing stuff. Apparently at some point, I I tinkered and offered mascara out so maybe we'll get some interest in him and elsewhere in terms of high valuation players gilliland you know gilliland he came from our youth intake was out on loan in the championship for the year just gone product of our academy let's be honest he's probably not even of championship level but millwall have given him some decent minutes he's improved a little bit and given the fact he's one of our own and he's come from our academy I'd love to find a way to fit him into the team even if it means we are slightly compromised and slightly weaker at the attacking mid position I might be willing to shift some players on to give this guy some game time, which might be silly, but I just feel like you have to show a bit of bias to your own academy products in Football Manager. When you look at the list of current attacking midfielders in the team sorted by ability, I mean, he's not even that far down the pecking order. He's got some of the best potential. If we move on some of the players I've already mentioned, yeah, maybe he fits into the team. Also, Erton, who we signed in January for a million pounds think we're just gonna sell he's just not very good i mean look to be fair we signed him for his release clause in january just because i had some foreign transfers to use up the whole plan with him was to sell him on for some money if we sell him on for five million plus technically profit now if you are wondering jack why have you come back in may there's got to be a reason there is a reason 
I thought like this might be the season to go a bit crazy with transfers to really burst onto the big scene, especially if we can move on some of our younger players for tens of millions of pounds. There's a man I've been eyeing up for a very long time. He's a man who I don't even really know if he wants to join us, but he has asked to leave Everton for continental football and he's wanted by Chelsea. And I feel like if I kind of hit continue, Chelsea probably make a bid in June and I can't get him. I really want to try and sign Aaron here. This guy, 25 years old, England international. He wants to leave. He's an unhappy camper. And I'm kind of tempted to break the bank for him. Which might be something silly, but I don't feel like our team is a million miles away from being elite. And this guy is absolutely bloody incredible, let's be honest. Now he's valued at 71 to 106 million pounds. Just as a reminder, our transfer budget is 120 million. So I could I could just buy him. Maybe. I really want him. Should I just suggest and see what Everton say? Okay, they want his release clause, but they've not locked it in. Now, I can technically afford this, but obviously I don't want to pay his release clause. Uh, 95. If I just sign him for 95 million to open the transfer window, is that me going mad with power or is this just one of those signings you have to try and make they've just i didn't think they just accept that the worst thing is he is probably 95 million pound good i'm just not sure if as a football club we're ready to spend that kind of money on one player especially a striker i don't really need a striker but i really want this guy also his current wages are 160 thousand pounds so we're probably going to need to shift some money into the wage budget to make this happen. He has some doubts about negotiating terms and he feels there's more appealing options elsewhere. No one else has made a bid for him yet, have they? I mean, if anyone else has made a bid for him, that is going to be heartbreaking. They haven't. Reason unknown. No one knows why Chelsea aren't interested in him. Maybe he's injury prone, although... Well, according to our staff, they don't think he is. Also, is he marketable? He could earn us £3.1 million a year. Right, here's the thing. If I have to give him like £160,000, right, like he'll make up like 20, 20 weeks worth of wages just in his markability. So surely it's fine. I suppose the good news here is he does actually want to talk. The only issue, he wants a minimum release clause. Why, why does he want a minimum release clause? Bolton, can you endorse the move? Can you just tell him that it's great here? Uh, Aaron did not care. He wants to treat the club as a stepping stone. No, 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 no. We're not having that here. You can be a superstar with us. He's locked in a minimum release clause of 105 million. Make it 128, and I'm fine with that. 190,000 pounds a week is going to make my eyes water. Um, currently, our wage structure supports a wage of 82,000. If I rejig this into wages, can I, can I then just afford it? Can, can we then just do it? I can go up to 1965. Uh, I feel like he's still not going to be happy with this. Also, he wants a release clause with a sell-on percentage. I don't want to lock in this in case it makes him angry, but I am going to remove the sell-on clause. The worst thing about this guy, he's really, really good, isn't he? Like, he is just... I, I don't want to get dramatic here. The fact that he even wants to negotiate with me is kind of mental, given our current club reputation. But Everton have just finished 10th with him up top for them. So, with that in mind... I feel like I really, really want him. Uh, he did break his leg last year, I've just noticed. I just figured we should check his injury history. I saw the red major. He has had a few injuries over the years, but I, I want him. I really want him. I'm going to adjust the budgets a little bit more here. Give me more wage budget. We can technically afford this. Should I be spending this kind of money? That is somewhat more debatable. I suppose what I will say in defense of this decision making is that as a Champions League club, £175,000 a week for this guy really isn't that unreasonable. Am I jumping the gun and maybe making a transfer that I should make in a couple of years time if I'm being sensible? Yes, the opportunity to do this might not exist in a couple years time. How is he going to like this? Okay, we're not a million miles away, but he has locked in that release clause of £107 million. Why do I feel like that's going to result in pain and suffering down the line? I should have locked it in at the higher number, shouldn't I? I should have, should have locked it in at the higher number. Palmy wants to walk away and then tell his agent that the release clause makes this unworkable. But if I do that, he's not going to want to talk to me. Um, how does that sound? He really wants 190. I can't give you 190. What about a bit more appearance money? I mean, I'm doing this and my eyes are watering and I feel in pain, but I also just feel like this is the right thing to do. It, it's a bold decision. Some might say it's a silly decision, though some people might be correct. I really don't want to give him an appearance, uh, a goal bonus too high because he'll probably score quite a lot. 
How about if you score 25 goals, I'll give you 1.5 million. Surely he accepts this. He does. He does. Ah. Uh, mm. uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Let's all be real for a moment. This guy is the one mental English player that gets produced in your save game as a regen, isn't he? He's absolutely sensational. I'm just wondering, actually, with the new skin, we do get a nation key player here. I was wondering if he might be the key player. Sadly, he's not. Jude Bellingham has him beat. I'm sure he's second place behind Jude. I realise I opened up this episode talking about players needed to get rid of and centre attacking mids and strikers being one of the positions. I'm trying to sign a centre attacking mid and a striker. I just feel like Aaron's worth it. Also, it might cause me issues with the wages, right? But my logic here is, and you can tell me if this logic's good, all the players who are good I've got locked in to kind of long-ish term deals, so it should be fine. I hope. I mean, I really want to keep Michael Bolton around. His contract's actually up in two years right now. Does he want to discuss a new contract? He hasn't for a while. He still doesn't want to. Every time I go off his profile, I think I shouldn't do it. Then I come back to the profile, look at the polygon and go, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Aaron, you are mine, hopefully. If Chelsea now put in a bid, this is all very anticlimactic. We've got a load of players being called up for international duty. I assume some of this is World Cup related and some of this is youth related. Isaac Warren is making the England's under, tw under 20 squad. The under 21s are playing in the UEFA under 21 championship qualifiers. Now, here's the neat thing with the skin, ladies and gentlemen. We can go to this competition and look at the Media Dream 11 for the under 21s UA UEFA qualifying round. So this is another really cool way Using the new version of the skin, you can actually just find talent. You can just look through these players. I love the fact that actually the Italian bloke we signed in um, January, Marziere, really? I'm just going to Diego. He is just going to be called Diego. Diego, can you remember him? He's got a face now. He didn't have a face in January. He's in the Media Dream 11 for this competition. That's cool. And on top of that, we can also just look through this list of players here at players that are their nation's kind of one of two best players, a bit like in league competitions. For example, Cam. Cameron Maguire, one of Gibraltar's two best under-21 players. He's rubbish, though, isn't he? I mean, Ozan Aaron here, 16 years old, plays for Bayer Leverkusen. He is sensational. He won't want to join me till he turns 18, sadly, but he's at the top of this list. And then Oggers. Is Oggers any good? I mean, he's very good, too. I'm going to scout both of these players. This skin does make finding young players... A little bit easy. You're not going to have to go through the tedium of searching through national teams one by one like I'd normally do. This screen here is, well, pretty good at producing results. I did notice there was this guy, Adam Kovar. He's a centre-back in the Media Dream 11. Is he good? No. I've already scouted him at some point. He, he's not so good. So it's not a flawless scouting technique. You do actually still need to scout the players. The media are idiots sometimes, but then... Who didn't know that? Anyway, I came back in May just to try and get the Aaron deal done nice and early because I'm worried that if I don't do it now, one of the big teams will make a bid. The reality here is we're just going to mash continue and find out if we're about to spend £100 million on a player. Then I'm probably going to be just mashing continue to the season tick over date or at least until we start to get some offers on our own players. Because really, I need to sell some players before I need to buy some players. And especially with the signing I'm currently trying to make, if I do sign him, I need to sell players so I actually have more money to spend. I was wondering if any Rugby Town players made the England squad. The answer's no. I feel sad about that. Although I say that, Aaron, we all know Aaron. Uh, yeah, he, he is actually in the list. So may, may, in, maybe Aaron will be our England player at the World Cup. Hopefully he joins us before the World Cup starts. I will get match reports on all our players at the World Cup, just in case any of them do well. I realised I talked earlier about wanting to sell players. I wonder if some of those players who I was talk talking about selling who are going to the World Cup are just not going to want to talk to, to teams until they're out the competition. That could be problematic. As I'm just hitting continue here as well, I'll just keep remembering new things that have changed in the skin. The new leagues in focus screen here is way, way nicer. I feel relaxed looking at it. You can change as well what leagues you're looking at from all the different leagues you've got active, which is kind of cool. So if there's any specifically you really care about, I don't know, maybe, maybe you really like your Scottish football. You can check up on Scottish football now. Liverpool make bid for Mascara. He's valued at 77 to 87 million. They've offered 29 and a half. I want 80. They're not going to like this, but I want 80. He's now going to cry too. He's not going to like this either, but I need 80 million. 30 million from him is a shocking offer. I think we need to remember it's early May. We don't have to accept the first bids we receive. Okay, uh, 
I didn't, I'll be honest, when I hit start record with this being the plan, I didn't think the plan would go to plan. The only thing that scares me slightly is the £107 million release clause. I think I've just got to do, I've just got to do it, haven't I? This is one of those transfers that if I don't do, I'm going to live to regret forever. He is going to join us. Nottingham Forest get £10 million, by the way, because of the amount of money we're paying for him. Aaron, England international, one of the best strikers in the entire save game, has joined us. Welcome, Aaron. Oh, I say he's joined. He joins us in two weeks. He's still in Everton blue till then. And if you are wondering, Jack, how is he even going to fit into the team? <laughs> it's a fantastic question. I think Pelagata's going to make way. I think we'll move Sam Fay to play at centre attack in mid alongside Misiak. And sadly, Pietro will move on. I mean, Pietro's wanted by Rangers, who made that massive bid for Ospina, you might remember, in January. If they want to make a massive bid for Pietro, I might be willing to let him go. Um, I know want to just point out the difference here between Aaron and Pietro. Now you can see why I want to spend £100 million on him. He, he's ridiculous, isn't he? It's not fair. It, he might help us win a Premier League, though. I did just miss this a minute ago, but Gilliland made his first ever appearance for Scotland. They won 8-0. He didn't get a goal or an assist in 90 minutes as a striker. <laughs> It's not great. I am beginning to realise it probably would have been more sensible, wouldn't it, to actually ensure that we get some sales done before I go ahead and uh, <laughs> spend £95 million pounds on a play. That's not how we do things here. Nothing is sensible. Also, can you remember Matthew Wilson, the guy I saw him from Barbados, because he was from Barbados. He's played a game for Barbados now. In fact, he's played 10. He got his first goal recently. That's the real headline news here. I signed him for £200,000. People want him. Should we try and sell him for 200000 I did spot that our affiliates, Horsham, are actually interested in him. How did Horsham finish the year? League 2 finished 5th, and then they won, the, they won the playoffs. They won the playoffs. They had the top goal scorer, Stuart Davis, who I look at and think, is he one of our players on loan at them? No, is the answer. He's on loan from Crewe. But between our loans and this bloke from Crewe, Horsham are in League 1. That's kind of crazy. Horsham, by the way, like they start way down in the non-leagues. At the start of our save game, you can see they're kind of down in the Ismian League Premier Division. They've had a lot of promotions in recent years. They've now had three promotions in four years. They're just doing their own little park to Prem. I have also just noticed their stadium capacity has been increased to 5,750. Uh, just a bit of context here. Our stadium holds 5,240. Our affiliates in League 2 have a bigger ground than us. I feel like that really does sum up this safe game. Also, the scout reports have come in for those two 16-year-olds I was looking at. Question marks over their potential. Neither of them's going to want to join me because they're 16 years old, but at least they're on our radar now. Marseille are interested in Sebastian Kurland. Now, Kurland was very, very clutch for us this year, but I've got a lot of attackers, haven't I? I've got too many attackers, really. The 21-year-old is good. Maybe it should be a case of selling him whilst his stocks are high. One concern I do have with our team currently is we have rubbish set-piece takers, and I believe he is one of the good set-piece takers. If we look at free kick takers in our team, Kurland has 13 free kick taking, then Rodriguez, our six foot four or six foot six rather, centre back, has the second best free kicks. Probably could do be finding a David Beckham-like player. Has just dawned on me. I didn't actually check. Aaron, do you have good set pieces? 16 free kick taking, 14 corners. That's why I've signed him. And that was another reason I bought him. Definitely didn't completely overlook that. I've got lucky there, haven't I? So the transfer window opens for us in a couple of, well, I was going to say a couple of weeks. No, a couple of days time, actually, is when it opens. For teams across Europe, it doesn't actually open, I believe, till the end of the month. But hopefully we will start to get some bids coming in soon. I've also just realised, I'm now allowed 21 scouts. I have no idea when that happened, but I, I guess we should probably hire some scouts. Welcome to my guide on how to find scouts in Football Manager. First, select the scout role. Next, highlight key attributes for scout. Confirm. Now sign the scouts that pop up. Thank you for watching my guide. I love the fact that in this universe, Pavel Nedved is just one of the best scouts in the world. He's absolutely insane. I want him. I did want him. It'll cost me £900,000, but it is Pavel Nedved. You know, he has an icon card in EAFC, so he must be good. You know what? Atalanta just have all the good scouts. I'm just going to steal Atalanta's recruitment team. That seems like a good plan. Just to check, uh, they did just finish ninth in Syria. So it's probably not the wisest decision. They've sacked their manager as well, but their scouts are good. So Conor Gegan has joined us. I'll be honest, when I decided to sign this guy, 
hadn't already signed Aaron for £90 million. Pounds. But we have signed him on a free transfer, and he is valued at nearly £20 million. So even if we just sell him on for money, I guess it's okay. We'll sell him in January. I'll be fine. Oh, look at that. Pavel Nadved, decision waiting a work permit. We've got to wait two weeks to find out if he joins us. But what a scout he'd be. Discussed earlier the fact that I might bring Mark Anderson back into the starting eleven. The youngster has just got two goals in a pre-World Cup friendly for Denmark. I feel like this guy is the future of our midfield. He is just a bit of an orchestrator, isn't he? There comes a point in every football manager save where you have to say to yourself, we're one of the big global powerhouses now. And whilst we're maybe not global in terms of reputation, in terms of our spending and in terms of this signing, I think it does make us global. Two signings confirmed. Swainston, I'm sorry, mate. Uh, you're not quite as exciting to talk about. But Aaron Chelik here, I believe it said Chelik. Please do let me know. Uh, I mean, this guy is just different gravy, isn't he? He comes into our team, walks into the starting eleven. And I think he's just going to be an absolute game changer for us. I feel like between Roger Rojas and Aaron here, we have our future striking set up to the end of this save game. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. Rennie Hansen has also returned from his loan at Rex. And this guy's getting nowhere near our first team, is he? I need to remove his availability for loan. And I need to get him sold. I am hoping that we might get a bid or two for some of our players. But usually you are waiting until July time for teams in Europe to wake up and realise they can actually spend some money. Real Madrid want Whit Misiak. They might want him, they can't have him. Al Shabab have shown interest in Kurland, and there's been offers made for Kurland. Who's offered the most? We've got £19 million pounds from Fulham and from Paris FC. £19 million isn't quite as much as I was hoping for, but when you look at his polygon and the players we've now got, I think anything over kind of £25 million-ish, I just have to take. Paris FC, I know that you've had a tycoon takeover, lads. You ain't fooling me. I know you've got money. We know they've got money. I'm going to milk them. I want 26 million. You know, you know what? I'll be reasonable. 25 million pounds. They've just bid it. You know what this means? This means now I can be a lot more brutal with my negotiations with other clubs. Fulham, if you want him, I want 30. They've offered 21. Fulham, I want 28 and a half. They've offered 23. They're just going to offer me the same amount as Paris FC, aren't they? I'm going to reject that purely on the basis that I'd kind of rather sell him to a non-divisional rival. There are a few of a bid here, but rather than renegotiate them all individually, I'm going to reject them all and now offer him out for more money. But 25 million pounds would be some pretty good money to receive for Kurland. We signed him for 7 million two years ago. In that time, he scored seven Premier League goals. He's not exactly been prolific. I am having a lot of pain physically when I look at our squad list and the wages of Aaron. It's worth it. It's worth it. Jack, it'll be worth it in the end. Just smile. Smile through the pain. Everything's fine. I don't know if you can remember Bailey Salmon. He was the guy who was Aberdeen's key player at the age of 17 when we played them in Europe. He has a release clause of £12 million. Pounds. I have a sneaking suspicion he's not going to want to talk to me. But maybe the fact that I'm now in the Champions League is going to win him over. Or maybe he's just going to pie me off. Uh, yeah, he told me no. Don't, never mind. Without sounding creepy, when is his 18th birthday? Okay, it's on the 24th of August. I bet if I make a bid on the day he turns 18, he'll then want to talk to me, because that's how Football Manager works. Is it creepy to be keeping track of a 17-year-old's birthday? Maybe slightly, but it's worth it. Al Sad have made a bid for Phillips. I'm not against selling Ashley Phillips. I know he signed him only this year for £16 million. He just didn't really play that well. And given the fact that we've got, obviously, a new young centre-back option who I want to give a little bit of game time to Matthew Martin. Yeah, moving on Phillips wouldn't be a bad idea. I really don't want to move him on for a loss, though. I feel like if I'm going to accept a bid, it needs to be at least 16 million. Schalke have made a bid for Pelagata. Should I sell Pelagata? He's 20 years old. He's got potential. We signed him for 15 million. He did play well this year. I mean, he's got no interest in talking to Schalke. I mean, would they, would they bid 50 million? I'm just going to get greedy here because I think he'd turn them down anyway. They wouldn't bid 50 all outright. What about if it was like 48? 48, 48, that, that was never going to work, was it? I don't think I want to sell Pelagata. As much as I want to get rid of attacking midfield options, he is just not top of my list of players to dispose of. I feel like the 20-year-old's still got time to develop and get better. I love the fact that William Espinosa of our academy is playing for the American national team. Also, why does he just look so American? He, just, he looks like... 
He just looks American. I don't know if that's a me thing. I think it's the neck. He's got quite a hench neck. And Americans, you know, they're quite buff. But yeah, he was playing for the American national team. We were actually currently top of Group F ahead of Iran. And here are how the groups are currently stacking up for people who want to see. I'll, I'll scroll through this. You can pause at your own leisure to see what's happening. England have won their first game of the group stage. Serbia are bottom of their group. Haiti have made it to the World Cup. Fair play to them for that. Uh, China not doing so well. Japan have won one, lost one, but have a minus four goal difference. And are there any other shocks? I mean, South Korea with Lee Min, minus five goal difference, two losses. It's not looking good for the South Korea national team. Don't think I've discussed this in the save game before. France won the 2026 World Cup. They actually beat Argentina in a rerun of the 2022 final. Norway finished third. And then for the year following that, Norway beat England in the final. I think we can all guess, and he's on my screen here, I think we can all guess who helped them win the World Cup. Just a sneaking suspicion. Oh yeah, we're going to be in the UEFA Super Cup. That's a thing that we have to play in. Yay. Al Saad have made another bid for Phillips. To be fair, they've now paid the £16 million, haven't they? That I said I'd accept. I'm just going to take this. We've, we've not made a loss on the transfer. We could actually make a little bit more money as well. If he plays 10 games for them, we get £4 million on top of that, which I'd like to think he plays in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he just wasn't very good for us this year as a centre-back. But you know what? No harm done. Didn't really cost us anything uh, in terms of results. Started eight, six sub-appearances. He, he's one of the rugby town players of all time. Probably will forget he played for us next year. Um, but yeah, it, it, he's going. Buy Ashley. Also, Rene Hansen, I am looking to move on. No one wants to buy him. I'm hoping that when we get to July, maybe the floodgates open and we see a surge in interest in our players. Pavel Nedved has been granted his work permit. I've got to pay a million pounds for him. Of course I'm paying that. It's Pavel bloody Nedved. And also Marta's joining us. Yeah, I've just stolen Atalanta's best scouts. Uh, do I feel bad for them? A little bit. Okay, I did offer Curlin out for more money. No one bid on him. I am just going to take £25 million for him. He was actually a pretty useful player for us this year, but I don't see a way in which he plays regular first-team football for us going forward. And with that in mind, and the money that we can get for him, it just makes sense to move him on. And Lee Min in South Korea's final World Cup group stage game uh, lost again. He had a poor game. Poor, poor bloke. It's okay. Come back to rugby. We'll look after you, mate. Apparently, we've managed to increase our stature. Where are we in the rankings? Oh, look at us go. I mean, we are behind three championship clubs, but we are ahead of Stoke City. Suck it, Stoke. I feel like this year in Park to Prem, our reputation has risen slower than I can ever remember it doing it, which considering the performance on the pitch is kind of mad, but... Yeah, just one of those football manager quirks, I suppose. Premier League signings of the season. Only one of these players is ours, uh, Sebastian Areco. Managed to come third place in the voting. The winner was Luka Vrabancic. Uh, this guy signed for 28 million, scored 15 goals from attack in mid. I mean, that is not a bad return for a team like Wolves. Uh, that sounds like I'm DC Wolves. I mean, for like a mid-table Premier League team, like Wolves in this universe. I don't. So the Wolves fans are going to take exception to that. I'd consider it a compliment. And I know someone's going to ask, who is Willis Darge, who uh, <laughs> Man City signed for £93 million? This is him. He got seven goals for £93 million and was considered the fifth best transfer. I want to know who the game thinks was the worst transfer. Okay, I've just had the leaderboard thing pop up, which means we're getting to the next season tick over date. What is our media prediction going to be? What is our kind of board expectations going to be as well? The board want a top half finish. We need to reach the league stage of the Champions League. Uh, good news, that is the, the stage at which we enter the competition. So we should be able to do that. The board want to discuss expanding the wage budget for performance analysis. I'll tell you what, they've really got bright ideas, haven't they? It's a great idea. Love it. Brian, you are a clever bloke. You know, like young children when they come to you and you have to pretend to be impressed by something. I don't want to ruin the magic if there's any young children watching the videos. But yeah, you know, you have to pretend to be wowed. That's what I'm doing with Brian here. Wow, Brian, what a great idea. Yeah, let's give our performance analysis more wages. You're so clever. I feel like I've got loads of pent up anger towards Brian that I didn't realise I had and it's now seeping through. Okay, so for the season coming up, we have a media prediction to start things of 7th place. Last year, I think it was 9th or 10th in the season preview. So we are still climbing on up. And if we look at the preview here, well, on these odds, we're tied with Leicester and Tottenham at 33 to 1 for the title. But we have a chance. I'll be honest, I was really hoping that our new striker, Aaron, was going to appear in the Media Dream 11. Maybe when Haaland retires, he has a chance. Guess what I've just spotted? Uh, first Premier League game of the season. Home against Liverpool. 
Yeah, you know, you know, I didn't have enough for Liverpool last episode. They didn't ruin my life enough yet. First game of the year. Yay. I'm annoyed. Also, this year we broke our record average attendance. And I hear you ask, but Jack, the previous record was your capacity of your kind of stadium. How have you got higher? Obviously, in European games, we had fans come to those games that were played in Coventry's ground, where we were getting like 20,000 plus fans. So yeah, we're missing out on a lot of money, aren't we, by playing at the tiny stadium in league games. The sooner the new ground comes, the better. Just as a reminder, should hopefully be here next summer. I hope. Have just had the likes of Rojas and Faye and Jao Victor. These players all had contracts that were agreed to kick in at the end of the current season. They've all been triggered. I do feel bad for the likes of Rojas, who probably thought he was getting a really good deal on £75,000 a week. I mean, he is now the second highest earner. He is earning less than half of that of Aaron. So, yeah, he's probably going to be annoyed about that. The Aaron transfer is either going to be the greatest transfer of all time or it's just going to cause me pain and then he's going to leave for his release clause and I look like an idiot. And Palmy just can't wait to find out. I think the aim now really is to get to the 1st of July, get the transfer window opened, well, globally, and see what kind of bids we might be able to attract for some of our players. Because before I sign anyone else... I need to move some players on quite badly. Little update on the World Cup, by the way. You can see here all the different groups. Uh, Thailand qualified for the World Cup. Didn't get any points. Neither did South Korea. Not a great year for the uh, Asian nations. Jamaica have made the knockout round. Fair play to them. Uh, are there any other massive shocks here that I'm spotting? Australia not making it out of the group stage. Nigeria not making it out of the group stage either. They're the, the big shocks. Ecuador, of course, with Mascara playing for them, they've made the knockouts. Riviera wants to discuss a new contract. He wants to discuss a new contract. Mm. How much does he want? <laughs> that, that's kind of what I need to know right now. How much does he think he deserves? 69 to 83,000 pounds. I've got an issue here, haven't I? Because I think he's going to be on the bench this year, so I don't really want to give him a new deal. And if I don't give him a new deal, he's going to cry. You know what? If he cries, he cries. And Goma, can you resolve the issue? I feel like captains can never resolve the issue, but maybe in Goma, well, I was going to say could do the impossible. The answer is he can't do it. I'm just going to lie to Fabian and say we can't afford it. I mean, to be fair, we literally can't afford it at the moment, and that, that's kind of the truth. Rugby Town will play Atletico Minero in the European South American Club Challenge. What is this? What What is the European and South American Club Challenge? Why am I playing in it in July? I'm so confused. The game is played at a neutral venue. Where are we play? We're playing in Spain. What is happening? I am going to need someone to explain to me what is this competition and why am I playing in it? Thank you. I, I guess it's for winning the Europa League, maybe? I've never heard of this competition in my life. Things you love to see. Roger Rojas is now considered homegrown at rugby. Huzzah. That's, that's pretty cool. I don't know if saying Hazar is particularly cool, to be fair. You can see here that now the list of players homegrown at club. This list is getting longer, isn't it? We've got plenty of players now homegrown at club. That's really cool to see. Heartbreak for Senegal. Uh, Haddad in goal, having a very good performance. 7.4 rating for Belgium. That does mean that Kamara and NDIA are sent home by their teammate. It's heartbreaking. Okay, Ashley Phillips is also now officially leaving the club. £16 million guaranteed, could rise up to £21 million. Not a bad player for us. Not a good player for us. Just a okay one-season signing. No money lost, no harm, no foul. Rugby Town have missed out on a 50% sell-on clause by Zito as he's just been released by Ipswich. Zito's just been released by Ipswich. We sold him to Ipswich for £22 million and they had him on a two-year deal and now they've just released him. I mean, that, that is one of the best bits of business we've ever done. Is it normal for me to feel anxious when I get an inbox I'm saying about players returning from loans and I can scroll on the list? I've got so many players at this club. There's almost certainly some players in the reserves that I should just be trying to sell just to get some money back before they run down their deals here isn't there like nakamachi is not a bad player at 20 years old but is he 12 million pounds good not really no and joffrey rassett here i had really really high hopes for but at 20 years old he really just hasn't developed i look at his valuation if i got half that 
I'd probably take it for him. I feel like next episode tomorrow is just going to be a very therapeutic kind of spring cleaning of the reserves and the first team. Just trying to get rid of some dead wood, generate as much money as possible. It is now the 1st of July, so Kanate is going to be joining us. That is another striker we're signing. And immediately, we have got loads of transfer offers for players. I should acknowledge it. Some regen faces you might have noticed have changed recently. Uh, I've had a bug with my face gen pack that I use where some of the players just randomly have their faces swapped. So apologies if you've noticed any of them. I believe Isaac Warren's gained hair. So yeah, really happy for him. He's actually looking like quite a good goalkeeper now, isn't he? I suppose that's reflected in the fact that Preston North End won him. Do they want to play him as a starter? They do. They can have him. Lucas Schumacher is wanted by Borussia Mönchengladbach. They've offered £1.8 million for him. Am I crazy thinking that Schumacher is just mega underrated? I feel like his valuation is way too low for his actual ability. I have also had a bid for Murphy and Goma. It's a good offer but it's Murphy and Goma. I can't sell him. Of all the attacking midfielders I need to get rid of, he's maybe one where it would make the most sense and I just can't bring myself to do it. I would definitely like to know in the comments, would you sell in Goma? I feel like at this point now in this save game, he is just always going to be a player on the fringes of the first team. Is it better to let him have a career elsewhere and enjoy it or should I keep him here as a prisoner? When I phrase it like that, it sounds really inhumane. To end today's episode, I'm just going to offer out a load of players and see if we get any bids on them. Because there's some players here who are good youngsters, but let's be frank, they're not going to get anywhere near my first team. And I think I probably just need to try and get money for them. There are so many players just in the reserve team. Players like Alms back in here, 21 years old. He's never going to get near my first team. I just need to get a few million pounds for him and I'll be happy. And similarly, Klaus Jäger here, 23 years old now. He's not a child anymore. In fact, he turns 24 very soon. Instead of loading him out, I need to sell him. I realise for these players I'm trying to get rid of, I need to remove the fact they're available for loan. I need transfer offers. I really don't need more attacking midfielders, but Phil Foden being released for some reason is tempting me, and it really shouldn't be. To be fair, it might be tempting me. He doesn't even want to join me. Fair enough, Phil. Okay, and we are going to wrap up the episode in just a moment. I've just offered out a load of the players I want to get rid of. This right here, this continues. You, I think, is going to set the tone for tomorrow's episode. I say that. Uh, it's not set the tone yet. Are we going to have loads of transfer offers come in for the players I've offered out, or am I going to be fighting a losing battle trying to get rid of Deadwood at this club this summer? I really can't afford to try and sign anyone until we get rid of some players and have some funds to actually spend on players. I know I went into this episode saying, we need a defensive midfielder. I'm nowhere near in a position to be able to do that, am I? I mean, there's four offers here. They're just loan offers. And teams trying to sign Lucas Schumacher for too cheap. Reject those. I've not had the inbox item yet that says, no offers on selected players. I'm just going to hit continue once more and hope. Okay, there's offers. There's, there are offers. Mosquera bids. £39 million from Schalke. It's not near his valuation, but 39 million does actually... I probably should consider that. Also, Nuremberg have made a bid for Jaeger. They've offered 5.5. I'm going to ask for 6 million being cheeky. They're going to bid that. That's a good sale. That's one. Teams in Saudi Arabia want Lucas Schumacher. They're bidding horrific amounts for him. Ah, uh, yeah. You see, this is what I feared. No offers for seven players. I really need to get rid of them or I'm loaning them out again and I don't want to loan them out again. Then again, what's worse? Loaning out players are having unhappy players here when I've got a squad of 30 players. 30. Lucas Schumacher is unhappy about being unable to pursue a move to Al Etifak. Yeah, uh, he's clearly been chatting to Jordan Henderson. I'm just not going to talk to him. I'll just ignore him. And I think here's the big thing to end today's episode on the Wolves and Schalke negotiations. Schalke have actually offered a really decent amount of money, but he says he's not interested in joining them. What does he think of Wolves? Uh, Wolves have made a bid for you. I'm told you're not sure about them. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't like Wolves. It's not every day a great club like Wolverhampton Wanderers. He doesn't want to go to Wolves. Okay, he's not going to want to go to Schalke either, is he? Very negative. Very negative. That's not good. Okay, he didn't want to go to Wolves. Maybe he'll want to go to Schalke. Uh, you're not in my plans. You should consider this. I accept I'm not wanting it, but that doesn't mean I'll just move anywhere. This needs to be something I think long and hard about. Be a great match for you. Accept the bit if you want, but I'm telling you I have no interest in joining Schalke. How much would Schalke bid? That's what I'm now wondering. 75 million Schalke? Okay. Well, it's a good job he didn't want to join them. I've just ballsed up that negotiation. That's not gone well, has it? 
that's not that's gone poorly. I'll tell you what, comment question of the day, so I know that you made it to the end of the video. How much would you sell Jefferson Mosquera for? Would you be selling him? I just feel like for a backup right back, who I'll be honest, hasn't impressed me massively, uh, it's probably just worth cashing in on him. That That's my mindset, at least. I feel like he's fine, but when I look at our team, Jao Victor is kind of capable of playing right back. And on top of that, NDIA spent the entire last season learning to play right back. He can now play anywhere along the back. I realised, in spite of the fact Mosquera told me he doesn't want to go to Wolves, the actual bid from them didn't get kind of deleted. So I'll just ask Wolves, 70 million. I knew they couldn't afford that. Well, you know what? We've not done loads of crazy transfer business today, but there's been some World Cup fun, and let's be honest, we've made the biggest signing in the history of the football club. So uh, I feel like that's quite a big deal. I feel like I've not made a big enough deal about it. Aaron Chelik. This guy, sensational. We've been looking at him for a few years. He generated as a free agent, started his career in the National League South. He's done the Park to Prem route, but without anything in between. And now he's here at Rugby Town for 95 million. When you look at his goal scoring record for Everton, you've got to back him to score goals for fun for us, right? Let me know what you make of the Mascara deal. What do you make of this deal as well? Have I lost the plot or is just one major addition just worth doing? Of course, we have got some players moving out. We might be able to get a little bit of money for some players, but the reality is I could do with selling a whole lot more tomorrow. Will we sell more tomorrow? You'll have to come back to find out. I'll see you guys next time. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And other than that, it's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.